Around 1,300 migrants escaped from a Mexican detention center near the Mexican-Guatemalan border. Mexican authorities were able to apprehend and return around 700 of these individuals, but around 400 that escaped boarded a train called The Beast, and they're currently heading towards the U.S. This is just another story in the ongoing migrant crisis where we are seeing more migrants apprehended already than for all of last year. It seems like Mexican authorities are upping their efforts to stop migrants. Nearly 15,000 migrants have already been returned to their home countries because Trump's rhetoric has been escalating, blaming Mexico for the ongoing problem. But even though we see story after story, it seems like Democrats aren't taking it seriously. Many politicians and pundits claim there is no crisis, it's a manufactured emergency. They can't seem to be unified on a message. While Trump wants to build a wall or increase general law enforcement numbers, the left simply says it's immoral or racist for the most part. And this is going to have a huge impact going into 2020. We're entering campaign season, and there isn't a unified message among the left as to how to deal with the situation. Today, let's take a look at what's going on with the latest migrant detention center escape and how it's going to impact politics going into 2020. But before we get started, make sure you follow me on Minds at minds.com slash Timcast. I want to break 100,000 subscribers and I need your help to do it. But more importantly, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, especially a basket that is biased and censorious. They may take my channel down if I cover something too controversial. So follow me on Minds at minds.com slash Timcast. And if you want to support this video, just share it on social media to help spread the news. Our first story from Axios, over 1,000 migrants escape Mexican detention center. Nearly 1,300 migrants escaped a detention center near the Mexican-Guatemalan border over shortages of food and sleeping space, reports the AP. They say why this matters. This recent breakout highlights the pressure that's been placed on the Mexican government. Following an influx of new arrivals, Mexico has already returned 15,000 migrants during the past 30 days, following threats from President Donald Trump to close the border if the country didn't rein in the migrant caravans. The Siglo 21 detention center has capacity for less than 1,000 people and had more than double that per AP. Nearly 700 of the escaped migrants were captured and returned to the center by midday Friday. The migrants were heard chanting, we want food, we want out, the AP reports. Following the escape of these migrants, we saw this story from Fox News. Hundreds of migrants board the Beast train in Mexico in a risky move to get closer to the U.S. border. The decision to board the train in mass comes after a breakout of migrants from a troubled immigration detention center in the southern border city of Tapachula on Thursday night. And we can see there's a photo of the migrants on the train. It says Central American migrants moving in a caravan through Juchitan, Oaxaca, are pictured atop a train known as The Beast, while continuing their journey toward the United States in Mexico, April 26, 2019. Migration authorities said nearly 400 migrants boarded the train, with images showing men, women, and children of various nationalities, most of them on the roofs of carriages. We hope our God above will keep helping us. We had to keep moving forward, Michael Hernandez, a Honduran, told Reuters after disembarking from the train together with a large group of other migrants after reaching the town of Ixtepec. They won't let us walk, so we climbed in the train. It's our only option. The story talks about how Donald Trump has been pressuring Mexico to do more and how Mexico has been largely responsive, stepping up efforts to detain the migrants and deport them back home. They go on to say, but such crackdown also led to migrants using the train which runs from the southern border state of Chiapas into neighboring Oaxaca and north into Gulf Coast state Veracruz. As this way, dozens of police and immigration checkpoints along the Mexican highways can be avoided. Even the journey on a train is significantly more dangerous. The train has been used by migrants in the past, but it became ignored in recent years because of the dangers of the journey, including death or lost limbs. They're riding the train again. That's a fact, said the Reverend Alejandro Solalinde, a migrant rights activist who works to provide temporary shelter for migrants. It's going to go back to the way it was. The Mexican government doesn't want them to be seen. If the migrants move quietly like a stream of little ants, they'll allow them to. But they are not going to allow them to move through Mexico publicly or massively, he added. The detention center where these migrants escaped could not handle that capacity. And apparently these people weren't being fed or taken care of. I can't blame them for wanting to escape, but this highlights the bigger problem, that resources in the US and in Mexico are being strained by this problem. It is referred to by the mainstream media often as a migrant crisis, yet for some reason, we are seeing politicians and pundits say it's a manufactured crisis, it's not real. Well, now there is growing concern that things are going to get more dangerous. We're hearing that people are concerned riding the train could result in loss of life or limb. 
But there's a greater concern that Mexican authorities are going to get more extreme in how they handle these migrants. From BuzzFeed, this could get worse. Mexico's raid on migrants marks a shift in approach to caravans. The government had always tried to stop the caravans, but never at this scale or so out in the open. A surprise raid by Mexican authorities on a caravan of migrants traveling through the country this week marks a dramatic shift in the country's response to large groups of Central American migrants and raises questions over whether future caravans will be able to traverse the country during what is typically the annual migration peak. The story makes reference to another story that I covered a few days ago about the largest raid on a migrant caravan we have seen thus far. They say Monday's raid resulted in the breakup of the 3,000 person caravan, sending migrants scrambling into the nearby hills in search of hiding. Images of immigration agents pulling children into vans from their crying mothers were released shortly after. They want to kill us in our country, a crying woman said as she was forced into a van by agents and police. Audio recorded by migrants traveling in the caravan and obtained by BuzzFeed News reveal a chaotic scene that resulted in many fleeing into the hills without food or water. Maciel, a woman who declined to use her full name and was among those who hid after the raid, said authorities aggressively apprehended women and children. They didn't care if they had kids in their arms, Maciel said. Mensing of Pueblo Sin Fronteras doesn't believe the raid will stop future caravans from forming, but said it's possible if the Mexican government continues to disrupt the migrant groups. This could get worse. I don't see it toning down. Trump is still saying Mexico isn't doing enough to stop migrants. But of course, Donald Trump's rhetoric isn't only aimed at Mexico. It's also primarily aimed at the Democrats. This story from today, Fox News. Trump, Democrats have turned border into Disneyland, says Perry Mason needed to win court fights. President Trump told Sunday Morning Futures, that illegal immigrants are pouring into the country at unprecedented rates because our economy is so good and everyone wants a piece of it. And he asserted, Democrats have now provided major incentives for illegal immigrants to bring children with them as a legal shield. You have to have Perry Mason involved in order to fight some immigration challenges and enforce border security, Trump said, alluding to the backlog of immigration cases and a recent Ninth Circuit ruling requiring that asylum applicants be allowed to go before a federal judge. We're moving people out so fast, he added. The problem is we have to register them. We have to bring them to court. Another country just says, sorry, you can't come into our country, and they walk them out. In our country, you have to bring them to court. You have to have Perry Mason involved. I mean, you know, it's all legal. You have lawyers standing at the border, our people, lawyers, wise guys standing at the border, signing people up. Trump continued, every time they catch a cold, they try and blame Border Patrol. It's a disgrace what's going on. And it could have been solved in 15 minutes if the Democrats would give us the votes, it would be over. And this is where things get political. The crisis is real. We are seeing serious action. People are getting hurt. They're dying. They're getting sick. Something needs to be done. And I don't know what the answer is, but I can say, according to Gallup, we have seen that immigration is a top issue with 78% saying it's extremely or very important. And this poll is actually fairly old. This poll is from back in November. One of Donald Trump's biggest campaign promises was building the wall. While he campaigned, he said he would deal with illegal immigration, and he is still very strong on this issue. But Democrats are rather fractured. We have a massive field today of 22 Democrats who don't agree on how to solve this problem. In a story highlighted earlier this month from Politico, Democrats are torn over their response to Trump's immigration crackdown. House Democrats are wrestling with how to counteract the president's hardline policies. House Democrats are grappling with how to address the surge of migrants at the border amid divisions over how to respond to President Donald Trump's hardline approach. The story concludes by saying that Democrats are wary of trying to do anything immigration related with Trump given how erratic he has been in the past, seemingly open to a bipartisan deal only to back away and instead push hardline policies like family separation. There's a clear solution there for the taking. The problem is the president doesn't want a solution because if he gets a solution, his single reason for being goes away. Rep. Jim Himes said of the 2013 Comprehensive Reform Bill. He's not interested in solving this problem. He's using it as fuel. People know that we have a White House that has flirted with this, and every time anything gets close to being serious, they walk back and walk out of the room, added a senior Democratic aide. I just think it's impossible to deal with Stephen Miller in the White House. Heading over to the New York Times, we can see that there likely won't be a unified message from Democrats anytime soon. We have 22 Democrats running and they need to place themselves apart from other Democrats, which means we're going to see a wide range of issues from centrist to far left 
to people like Beto O'Rourke who don't really have any policies available and no one really knows where he stands. When we pop over to someone like Joe Biden, most people don't even know what his opinion on healthcare is. But one thing is for certain, they need to make sure they stand apart. So where they end up on different policy ideas, it's likely going to be very, very different across the board, meaning we will see solutions ranging from the most extreme, like open borders, all the way to more moderate Democrat policies like go ahead and build the wall and secure the border. And as a quick side note, I want to stress how important this issue is going to be, especially considering the economy is doing really, really well. This story from Politico says, Dems sweat Trump's economy. We don't really have a robust national message right now. One top Democrat fears that could be a recipe for disaster in 2020. And when we head back over to that Gallup poll, we can see the economy is actually on par with immigration in terms of how important Americans see it. And if the economy is doing really, really well, that leaves only healthcare and immigration. Healthcare is complicated. But if the Democrats don't have a message on immigration, then the Republicans do. They want to repeal the ACA and they want to secure the border. The most important thing we can take away from this is not the political pandering or the bickering between Democrats and Republicans, but it's that 1,300 people had to escape a facility that couldn't accommodate them. We've seen photos of people sleeping under bridges. This is a serious, serious issue, no matter which side of the aisle you find yourself on. The debate over what these people will do once they get here is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned, because for one, we need to secure our borders. We need to make sure we can account and accommodate these people. Otherwise, they will get sick, they will get hurt, and they could die. And that should be more important for everyone. Recently, it was reported that Pope Francis was donating $500,000 to Mexico-based projects to help migrant communities as media attention has faded. The funds will be distributed between 27 projects associated with 16 Mexican dioceses and congregations, all of which asked for help to continue providing food, lodging, and basic necessities to those fleeing their home countries through Mexico. And I will absolutely applaud the Pope for doing this. When you hear that these people are being detained and they're hungry, they're not getting fed, well, people need food. But there's an inherent philosophical conundrum here. If you provide for them, will it encourage more of this behavior? The saying goes, Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for the rest of his life. If they do provide for these migrants at least too much, will it result in more people taking advantage of that to try and make their way to the U.S.? Or is the obligation to protect life more important? It is a serious issue. Ultimately, I err on the side of give these people food, take care of them, don't let them get hurt or die. But there is a serious problem in that we need to secure our borders because it's very, very dangerous. And encouraging these people to embark on these dangerous journeys can get, can get them killed or hurt. It can get their children killed or hurt. So I don't know what the solution is. I'm not a policy expert. I don't really know what's going on down there outside of these news stories. But I do know that Democrats need to come up with an idea and work with Republicans in some capacity. And I also know that there's a good point brought up by the Democrats that Trump wants it his way or the highway. He wants that wall and he's going to get it even if he has to declare an emergency to do it. However, Trump did kind of walk back from his original proposal of this massive, beautiful concrete wall from sea to shining sea, and now he's getting just select border fencing. But again, everyone's gonna have their take on this. Everyone's gonna have their opinion. There's probably a lot of things that I didn't get right or just don't know about, so I can only really leave it there, but let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll keep the conversation going. You can follow me on Minds at TimCast. Stay tuned, new videos every day at 4 p.m. Eastern on this channel, and I'll have more videos for you on my second channel at youtube.com slash timcastnews starting at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all next time.